In this concluding message, we share important insights about the flow of the Holy Spirit's power and simple keys on how to release the power of the Holy Spirit. All right, why don't we rise up to our feet and make our declaration this morning that we will spend some time together in God's Word. So if you brought your Bible, I'd just like you to please hold it high up in the air. Let's say this out loud, bold, and strong together. This is God's Word. This is God speaking to me. I am who God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I will become everything God has promised. I'm saved, healed, delivered, redeemed. I am blessed, victorious, prosperous, triumphant. I'm a minister of God, a servant of Christ, and a channel of His blessing to many people. I receive His word, I believe His word, and I live by His word. Christ is my master, and to Him I am in absolute surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Please shake hands with the people next to you. Say hello to them. Greet them. Give them your name. Before we get into God's Word this morning, I just want to share a, a few testimonies that came in this week. And we encourage you to, you know, email your testimony. And nowadays people are using the church app to send their testimony in. So that's also great. Um, uh, so this one came in on Wednesday, this past Wednesday, through the church app. Remember last Sunday we were praying. We took some time to pray for people who had problems with their ankle. So here's this person who says, I had a fracture in my right ankle in 1998. So that was a long time. Um, and I used to constantly have pain uh, whenever I strained. Last Sunday when I came, you know, when she came to church, she still had the same pain. But after she stood, she was prayed for. Uh, the pain completely disappeared until now that she's sending the testimony on Wednesday. There is no pain. All praise and glory to God. Amen. Here's another one that came in anonymously. So the, this was ca again came into the church app. So I don't know whether this is a man or a lady. <laughs> it was sent anonymously. So uh, uh, I don't know who it is. Uh, but this is what it, the, uh, this testimony says. I'm summarizing here. Uh, this person started worshiping at uh, Central since 2016. Uh, they would come on and off because they actually are part of another church. Uh, for the last year. Uh, for the last year, this person's been suffering with a certain kind of infection which wouldn't cure at all. Uh, it's just recurring over and over again. This person met uh, six different doctors in the course of the year, took several different medicines, spent lots of money on different tests, and went through lots of worry and stress and all of that. This person was in church last Sunday, 12th, and during the end, you know, we were having this prayer. Uh, this person was praying, I don't know he or she, but was praying very diligently and I, I, at that time. And, uh, you know, the prayer was made that every shackle of the devil be broken, every bondage of Satan will be released, and every disease will be healed. Uh, so, this person writes, I didn't feel very different at that point. But, by that evening, I felt like a weight was lifted. I felt free, and that I was completely free from that infection that had engulfed me for a year. I praise God all my heart and thank God. Uh, you know, for, for what took place, and this was being written on Wednesday, uh, I'm, I've, I feel so relieved from being healed. I suffered so much, and God has been merciful and kind to me. Amen? So I want to thank God for that as well. And, uh, you know, as we hear these testimonies, this may be, in our estimation, okay, small things that are happening, but we are pressing in for bigger and bigger things. Amen? We want to see God do. Lord, we want you, we want you to see. We want, you to, we want to see you do amazing things. Bigger miracles. Incurable diseases. Blind eyes open. Or, and, and people walking. And, and just want to see all those things. Everything that Jesus would do if he was here, we want to see those things. Amen? Because Jesus hasn't changed. So why should his church be different? Right? His church should just be the same as when he was here. Uh, on the earth 2,000 years ago. And we should come with that kind of expectation. And wherever we go, 
we should see that kind of Jesus, or Jesus manifested, revealed in that kind of manner. Uh, as the one who heals, who delivers, who loves people, who takes care of their needs, uh, who makes himself so real uh, to everyone. So we should continue doing that. I just want to make a comment here about uh, the testimony that you heard about Anand on the, on the video. Maybe that video didn't kind of convey the full impact of what happens. You know, they heard the word on Sunday. So he and his wife, Anand, Anand and his wife, Kavita, they run this shop where they sell clothes and garments and so on. So they needed to make a payment, and they needed to make the payment on Monday. It was that serious. They had to do it on Monday. And uh, so they held on to that word from morning to the time they opened their shop on Monday morning. They were holding on to the word, God, you said something will happen. Till 3 o'clock, no customer came. Till 3 o'clock. They had to pay, make the payment by Monday evening. But between 3 and 5 o'clock, some new customers came. I don't know how many, like I don't know, 3 or 4, whatever. Some new customers came and they bought bulk purchases which gave them all the money they needed to make the payments. So, and, you know, Anand said something like that had not happened in a long time. Not happened in a long time, something like that. So for them, it was a real encouragement to their faith. And I think that, you know, what really encouraged me was to see how they held on to that word. They sat with that word in the shop, say, God, you said something will happen on Monday. Something has to happen here today. They held on to that word and, and God did it. Very unusual. Uh, I, I know what they've been going through for some time now. Uh, and so it's, it's they, they, you know, when, they sh when he shared that with me, I said, you know, it's just something we need to let everybody know, uh, you know, what God did for you. So uh, we encourage them to do that. So this morning we are closing off this series on, on the gifts of the Spirit. This is the uh, eighth message in in this series, and I just want to talk to us a little bit about being a channel of the Holy Spirit's power, just to encourage us uh, on some aspects of, of uh, being a channel, a conduit uh, of the power of God's Holy Spirit. You know, um, we are closing off this series on the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, that does not mean you and I should stop desiring or Pressing into the gift, right? Uh, just practical for practical reasons, we can't be keep talking about the gifts every Sunday, so we have to move on uh, and look at other things in the Bible. Uh, but I want to encourage you to keep pressing, keep pressing, saying, God, we want to see more of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we want, uh, and you personally, press in. And God, I want to see this happen anywhere, uh, wherever I am. You know, you, you could be in school or in college or uh, in a restaurant or in the shopping mall, wherever you are, God, please use me to bless people, to minister to people. Uh, this morning, I want us to uh, just share some insights here on flowing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'd like to us to read from Mark chapter 5. We'll read the passage there from Mark chapter 5, verses 24 to 34, uh, and then we will get into uh, sharing a few thoughts. Mark chapter 5, verses 24 to 34. So Jesus went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years, and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garments. For she said, if, I on, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, 
came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Now, we know that when the Lord Jesus ministered on the earth, he was deity who took on humanity. So God clothed as a man. But he chose to confine himself to the limitations of a human person. So he walked in a human body physically like you and I would walk. He was constrained in time. He could be only at one place at a time. He had to eat. He had to sleep. Everything that, that you and I would do in a human body, he limited himself to that. Though he was deity. But he confined himself to that. And when he ministered, he also ministered by the power of the Holy Spirit upon him. So you would find this in the Gospels. The Gospel telling us that Jesus came or he returned in the power of the Spirit. And when he, you know, in the early part of his ministry as he began, he said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for God has anointed me to preach minister and do all these things. So he ministered by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now what Jesus did was he turned around to all of his disciples, to all people who would believe in him and say, each one of you are going to do, and I'm just paraphrasing here, each one of you are going to do the things I did because you are going to receive the power of the Holy Spirit. So he turned around to you and me. He says, hey, you're going to do what I did. Because you are going to receive the same power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The problem with us is we don't really believe that. So we have to keep preaching, preaching, preaching. That cast, cast, you know, this is it. This is it. This is what he said. Come on. Let's believe it. Because we look at ourselves and say, who, me? Little old me? Having the power of the Holy Spirit, me going to do these things? No way, Jesus. <laughs> so we don't really believe it. But listen, this is what he said. Because this is what he desires. This is what he intends for each one of us. That we will do the things he did through the power of the Holy Spirit. So this morning, in order just to encourage us along that direction... I want to share with us these few in insights. These are not, you know, deep or difficult. They're very simple. Eight simple insights very quickly on uh, the release, on the flow of the Holy Spirit's power through you and me. Number one is that the Holy Spirit releases his power to flow out of us into others, effecting a change. This is something you and I need to Get a grip on in our spirit. That the Holy Spirit actually releases his power through you, me, each one of us. He actually does that. God's power flowing through you and me. And look at Jesus. As he walked in that human vessel, we see here in Mark 5 verse 30, it says that power had gone out of him. Power went out of him. You know, it wasn't like floating somewhere in the air or some cloud brought it or some angel delivered it. I mean, God could use, God does use those elements. But really what God wants is, is that his power flows out through you, through each one of us. Amen. So the Holy Spirit does that. He actually releases his power to flow out of you and me to effect a change, to cause a miracle, to do, get some, something done in somebody's life for somebody in their situation, in their circumstance. The Holy Spirit does that. Secondly, the Spirit of God uses the spoken word, the laying on of hands, even material substances like cloth or oil as 
points of contact to transmit his power. See, in this particular incident, the woman didn't touch Jesus. She touched his clothes. She touched the edge of his robe. But the power of God went out of Jesus through his clothes into the woman. Amen? So God uses those, those things. He uses our spoken words. So your words become a carrier of the power of the Holy Spirit. Now you'll be careful with your words. Oops. <laughs> My words are a carrier. Words spoken in faith. They become a carrier of the Holy Spirit's power. You know, in John chapter 6 and verse 63, it's not on your screen, but you can make a note of some of these verses. Where Jesus said, the words I speak to you. They are spirit. They are life. Or the Good News Bible puts it like this. The words I'm speaking are carrying the life-giving spirit to you. The words I speak are bringing the life-giving spirit. So words become a carrier. Your words of faith. Or touch. These are all just points of contact that the Holy Spirit uses to transmit His power through you to somebody. Touch. Cloths. She touched his garments. But God has used even unusual things, other things, like oil. You find in the Old Testament when Samuel poured oil on David, the Holy Spirit came on him. Pouring oil, Holy Spirit coming. So God used the same thing these days. You, you put oil, it's not something magical about the oil. It's just a point of contact. It's just something that you and I do. Uh, to transmit, so to speak. But really, when you do that little act of faith, power of God comes. Sometimes it's blowing. Jesus blew on his disciples and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Sometimes it was Peter's shadow. Peter was walking by. His shadow was falling on people and people were getting healed. So God can use anything that he wants. Anything. To as a point of contact. So people were jumping into Peter's shadow. It was just their faith. They were connecting with that. But we must understand this. That God can use touch. He can use words. He can use cloths. He can use oil. Any of these things as a point of contact to transmit power through you to somebody or into a situation. Number three. The flow of the Spirit's power is recognizable through the human spirit. It may even be felt by our five senses. In Mark 5 verse 30, uh, that verse says that Jesus knowing in himself, he perceived inside him, power went out of him. So this may not happen all the time, but it does happen. That when you're praying for somebody, you can sense inside you, I know something is being transmitted. That person being prayed for would sometimes sense inside their spirit or sometimes even physically. They could be tingling. They could be a lifting up of some weight. Uh, all kinds of sensations. Whatever God wants to do, He could do it. But there's a knowing, there's a perception of power of something that, that is being released by the Holy Spirit. Number four, the Holy Spirit releases His power in response to faith. So if you will, faith is like the switch. You've got the wires connected, so you've got your hand on somebody, or they are touching your shirt or something, or there's a point of contact, something's happening, you're speaking words, all that's good, but now faith is the switch. Jesus looked at this woman and he said, daughter, your faith has made you well. So faith is a switch. So we understand this, if when we have faith, we believe, it causes the power of God to go into operation. That's why I, I, I like that little testimony that Anand shared. They sat there believing what they heard on Sunday. And they were in a desperate situation, sure. But they believed, God, you said something on Sunday. It will happen on Monday, 3 o'clock, still believing. They sat believing. Faith causes that release of that power. 
Now we know that there are also times God works independent of our faith. God is sovereign. So uh, he can just move as he chooses and he does that. There are times when there are people who may not have any faith or they may be struggling in their faith and all of that and God still ministers, God still works. Why? Because he's God. He still does that. But the norm is God invites you and me to have faith. That's the norm. Right? Salvation is a gift given to every person, but each one has to personally have faith in Jesus Christ to receive salvation. Like that, God invites each one of us, and we must understand, we, when we have faith, we are positioning ourselves to really receive a manifestation of the power of the Holy Spirit. Number five, the power of the Holy Spirit, of course, results in supernatural things, and signs, and wonders, or healings, or miracles, or deliverances, whatever needs to be done, the power of the Holy Spirit makes that happen. He causes things to happen. So we must be open. The power of God can flow through you to cause something supernatural to happen for somebody. It could be a situ change in their situation. It could be a, a change in the finances. It could be an open door for their lives. It could be a divine favor coming on them or you know, whatever. God can do it. It could be healing. It could be a miracle. And the power of the Holy Spirit can flow to cause that to take place. Number six, the Holy Spirit can envelop an entire space with this power. So the Holy Spirit's power flowing out through you can cover an entire space. Think about this. In Luke 5 verse 17, Jesus was in somebody's house. A lot of people had come to him. There was probably a house meeting going to happen. A lot of people had gathered together the house. And some of them were skeptics. They were these Pharisees and they were these religious people. Maybe you know, they came to just be spectators. Let's see what's going to happen today. They've been hearing about all this. So they must have come, uh, with, you know, to investigate, to examine, to see if all these things are real or not. So the Bible says that he was in the house in Luke 5.17. The Pharisees and all of them were gathered together. And it says that in that verse... The power of the Lord was present to heal them. So God's power filled that room or that house. And they were ready, it was ready to be healed. Now some of us have studied physics. So we know electromagnetic fields. If you're in that field, things can happen. You know, you rotate... Uh, I don't want to go into too much details here. But you can generate electricity out of that field. <laughs> you can make things happen out of that electromagnetic field. The field is present. But if there's no activity, nothing generates. But the moment there's activity, something happens. Things can happen. So if you want to think of it like that, please don't go and say, Pastor said, Holy Spirit power is magnetic field. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just using an example, right? So the Holy Spirit... His power envelops that place, that space, that area. Something, it's full, of, it's pregnant, it's full of potential. Something can happen. But the trigger there is faith. So in that same house that where Jesus was present and the whole, it says the power of the Lord was present to heal. None of those Pharisees, none of them experienced a miracle. But there were, you know, I think it was four friends who had, one of the friends was paralyzed. They brought him on a stretcher and they open up the roof and they let him down into that room where the power of God was present to heal. And they experienced God's healing. Jesus said, I see your faith. Faith tapped into it. But I want us to understand the power of God can cover an entire place, an entire area. We see that in, the, in Genesis 1-1 where the Holy Spirit, he he covered the entire globe. It says the face, the spirit of the Lord moved upon the face of the waters. The entire globe, entire earth was enveloped by the presence of the Holy Spirit. Number seven, distance is not a limiting factor in the release of the Spirit's power. So you can be sitting in Bangalore and you may hear about a friend or a family member who needs help and you may not be able to touch that person. Uh, you may not be able to, you know, uh, put oil on that person, but it's okay, you can speak words. Your words can transmit power. And so you can speak over them. You can speak into their situation. 
and you can release the words which become a carrier of the Holy Spirit's power out of you into their lives, into their situation, wherever they may be in this world. Because distance is not a limiting factor for God's power. Amen? You can do it. Now, it's not the volume of your voice that matters. You don't have to shout and scream. It's words of faith. You just speak into their situation. Speak into their lives. Release God's power for them uh, and into their situation. The last one here is this. That worship expressed through song or music brings an increased manifestation of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. One example that I want to point to is in 2 Kings 3 and verse 15. Here were three kings, uh, leaders of communities, three kings who came to the prophet Elisha. And they said, we want to hear a word from God. Is God going to give us victory in this battle or not? Now, I don't know what state Elisha was in at that moment, but maybe he didn't feel very spiritual. Now, we all have those times. You know, you have a big lunch, you're ready to sleep. <laughs> Somebody calls on the phone, can you please pray for me? Like, man, I'm half asleep already. <laughs> right. Uh, but, you know, whatever state Elisha was, these kings made a demand. We want to hear what God is saying. So what did Elisha do? He says, 2 Kings 3.15, bring me a musician. Now, you and I can be certain that this musician played unto the Lord. So he played something unto the Lord, a worship song. And it says, as the musician played, the hand of the Lord came on Elisha. That stirred up. The hand of the Lord is an Old Testament term for the presence of the Holy Spirit. That stirred it up. So something you and I can learn. So somebody says, can you please pray for me? And maybe, you know, your mind has been busy with your work. Let's say you're in the office. You're, you're, you know, you're, you've been focused on solving some problem there. And uh, it's lunch break. So you're going out to get some lunch. And, and, you know, your friend is telling you something. And your mind is still half thinking about the problem. And then it suddenly comes to a point where your friend says, uh, can you pray for me? Now, your mind has been preoccupied with some natural thing. Now you want to step into this place where you can minister the power of the Holy Spirit. What are you going to do? Simple. Worship. Now, you may not have music there. Definitely not. But worship doesn't always have to have music. Worship is an expression of your heart. It's something that you are turning towards God. So very simple. You just say, Lord, I worship you. Lord, you are so great. Jesus, nothing is impossible to you. That's worship. You've switched from being preoccupied with something that you've been involved in in the natural. Now you've switched into a place where the hand of the Lord can now move through you. Are you understanding? Simple thing. Lord, I worship you. Just speak words of worship. Now, if you have the opportunity to sing a song or somebody to play an instrument, that's great. But you don't have to be dependent on that because worship is of your heart. And you can worship anytime, anywhere, any place. Just say words of adoration to God. It brings you to that place where now you're positioning yourself to release the power of the Holy Spirit. So, eight simple things about insights, about how to release, about releasing the flow of God's Holy Spirit. I want to... Uh, give you three things that you and I need to do here so that we can be channels. We can release the flow of the Spirit's power. I want to remind you of this verse of scripture we saw last Sunday in John 7, 37 and 38 and 39. Jesus said, he who believes in me. All of us here. He who believes. Out of his or her, because it's gender neutral. Out of his innermost being, out of his heart or his innermost being will flow rivers of living water. He didn't say he who believes in me will have a cloud out of which the Holy Spirit will flow. No, no, no. It's not the cloud. It's you. He who believes in me out of his innermost being, out of his heart, out of you. Will flow 
rivers. Rivers talking about unlimited supply. Rivers of living water. And we know, verse 39, this he spoke about the Holy Spirit. So this is Jesus' plan, his intent. That through every believer, there is this flow of the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. Like a river to bless other people. But three simple things I want to give you and me for us to position ourselves to have an increased measure of, of this flow. That we continually grow in these things. Number one is that we must increase the capacity of our spirit. Notice Jesus said, out of his spirit. So he, your spirit is the conduit. So if you want to imagine it, you can think of it like this. Imagine a huge reservoir of water. Huge dam. There's unlimited supply of water. But if you connect to that reservoir with a small five-inch tiny pipe, all you get is a trickle on the other side. But if you want large volumes of water, you connect with big pipes. Right? So the supply is unlimited. Our spirit is that conduit. So how we connect to the supply of God's spirit matters. So increase the capacity of your spirit. Because out of your spirit will flow. Are you with me? There's no problem on the reservoir side. Abundance. What Jesus wants is rivers of living water. He says, please don't give drops. <laughs> Give rivers to the people. But the conduit, the channel out of your spirit. The spirit is the conduit. So increase the capacity of your spirit. How? Through your relationship with God. Through your time in the word. Through you praying and just being in the word and having faith in God. Your relationship. That, the developing of your spirit is important. Because that's what enables the flow of that supply through us. To people. To increase the capacity. Amen? It's an ongoing journey, but we must keep going, growing. Say, God, I want to be able to release more of your power. Show me what to do because there are people who need that. There are situations that need to be addressed by the power of God. The next thing is this. Clear out blockages in our soul. Even if you have huge pipes connecting to the dam, but if those pipes are all blocked up, not much is going to flow. On the other side. And things that really block the flow are mostly things of the mind, the soul. Blockages of the soul. That hinder the flow of those waters, those living waters that Jesus actually wants to be like a river. And I've just categorized them here just for communicate to communicate. Some of these blockages are condemnation related. Meaning our own feelings that condemn us. Feelings of guilt, of unworthiness, rejection. These are condemnation. We feel like, I'm not worthy, God. So we condemn ourselves. Or we believe the lies, the accusations of the enemy that makes you feel like, you think God is going to release his power through you? I mean, like, oh, okay, not me. God, please use somebody else. Hey, but Jesus said, he who believes in me, every one of us. Out of his spirit will flow rivers of living water. So that includes you. So get rid of these thoughts of condemnation. Things that make you feel unworthy. Or they could be um, offense related. Meaning if I'm holding hurts, unforgiveness, offense to other people, prejudice. Those become blockages in my soul. Unforgiveness is a big thing. It hinders the flow of God's power. Some of these things could be self-related. Things about ourselves. Selfish, selfishness, selfish ambition, a self-promotion, pride, envy, jealousy, competition. All these things are blockages of the soul. They limit the flow. Of the power of God. And the last category would be disturbances related. Things like when our mind is preoccupied with other things. 
I might be very disturbed about other things. So when you're really disturbed in your mind, it's very difficult to say, okay, God, I want your power to flow. So we must learn to get our mind calm. And we, we talked about this, I think, a couple of Sundays ago. To avoid those distractions, those turmoils, things that disturb our mind. Be in a place of peace. Now, you will have things around you that are disturbing, but you can be inside you. You can be at peace. So get out those blockages of the soul so that we can release power. And the last thing, of course, is out of your position in God, release the Spirit's power by faith. So whenever you're ministering, minister out of who you are in God, in Christ. Not because you've been a good person that day. Or not because, you know, I have read 25 chapters yesterday, so today power must flow. No. You ministered out of your position in Christ. In Christ, you're a child of God. In Christ, you are clothed with His righteousness. In Christ, you have been rested with His authority. And out of who you are in Him, you minister. In faith. Amen? So, we work on these three things constantly, consistently in our lives. And I want to close with this. You know, what's the reason? Why are we talking about the power of God? Why are we talking about the gifts of the Spirit? Why are we doing all this? We shouldn't lose our focus. This is very important. The reason we do this, number one, is always to glorify Jesus. We don't do it for our sakes. Oh, we want to look good. Oh, we want to have some name or fame. No, 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 no. This is to glorify Jesus. Secondly, we want people to encounter the Lord so that they can be saved. Amen? People to encounter the Lord so that they can come to faith in Christ. And thirdly, it's because we want their needs met. We want to see people's needs met. I mean, yes, some needs can be met through natural means. We can help people. We can, uh, you know, we can do all those things. That is good. We must do it. But at the same time, there are certain needs that only God can meet. Only God's power, supernaturally. And so our motivation is always this. We want to glorify Jesus. We want people to encounter Jesus. And we want to see people's needs met. Lord, let them experience your love. Let them know you love them. Let them know you care about them as you work this miracle or do what you're doing. I want to close with this quote from A. A. Allen just to encourage us to uh, pursue more of God's uh, uh, supernatural power flowing through each of our lives. A. Allen was uh, one of the foremost healing evangelists used in the previous century. Around the 1950s, 60s, 70s, uh, God used him along with many others. Uh, and uh, he wrote a book on the price of God's miracle working power because he was seeking God. He was saying, God, how do I do the things that Jesus did? Uh, what is it going to take for me to be a vessel that you can use? And, and, and the Lord Jesus uh, appeared to him, spoke to him, uh, and then he wrote this book where he shares, I think, about eight or nine of these things that the Lord Jesus spoke to him. And here's a quote that kind of summarizes the essence of that book. He, uh, 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 this is based on Matthew 10, 24, where Jesus said, the disciple is not greater than the master. So he's ba on based on that, here's what he says. He said, the disciple should not be above his master, but he shall be like his master. But if we are to be like him in power, we must also be like him in holiness, in consecration, meekness, and compassion. We must be like him in prayer and fellowship with the Father. We must be like him in faith. We must be like him in fasting and self-denial. If it were possible for the servant to be like him in power without paying the price he paid, then the servant would be above his Lord. So basically he's saying, look, if Jesus himself walked this manner of life in obedience to the Father, in holiness and purity, in, in consecration to God, in compassion for people, if we walk like that to be a carrier of the Holy Spirit, then you and I have no shortcuts. We've got to walk like how he walked. Amen? So let's continue saying, Lord, make me like Jesus so that we can carry your power, your miracles uh, to a, hur a hurting world that needs evidence, that, that needs to see the manifestations of the Spirit so that they can come to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen?
That's why we're here. And I, and I want to encourage all of us, all of us, let's step out. Say, God, use us. When you get an opportunity, pray for people. Stretch out your hands. Pray for them. Minister to them. And say, God, we want to see miracles. If they have needs, release God's power into their situations uh, to see things change. Amen? Let's stand to our feet, please. We'll get ready to close here. Let's call our worship team up. Just going to pray for a few, just pray for people right from here, and uh, then we will close, we'll dismiss. Let's just worship God for a few moments, right? We learned something today, that worship helps us stir up that presence, the presence of the power of the Spirit. So you worship the Lord. Say, God, speak to me, minister to me, whatever you need. I'm going to pray from here. Um, we will see, we just let God do whatever he desires to do this morning uh, as, as we pray together. Let's just worship a few, few moments. we just honor you. We worship you, Jesus. We love you, God. And we acknowledge that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, Jesus. 
that Jesus we read about in the Gospels, you are still the same, Jesus. You have not changed. You love us immensely, God. You love every person here immensely. We care about each person. We care about our deepest needs, so God. Lord, even as we stand here in your presence, we thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit available to each of us to meet our needs, to work miracles in our midst, to work miracles in our lives. We thank you. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, God. I want to just pray for a few things, but I want you, even if I don't mention it or don't call it out, I want you to believe God just to minister to your needs. Whether it's a healing, whether it's a situation in your life that you want God to touch, a change, a circumstance. I want you to believe God. I may call out a few things, but... God is not limited to those things. He knows each one of us. And our, our needs may be varied, but you look to Jesus. And you touch him saying, Lord, I receive this miracle for my life. Whatever that might be. Whatever your need is. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to pray specifically for problems with the years. Whatever this condition, problem, the ears, that's affecting the ears. It could be a smallest thing like an infection. It could be something that's, that's causing impairment of your hearing. But I want to pray to, for that, just releasing God's healing there. I also want to pray for people, like we heard a testimony of George and Vinci about how God supernaturally touched them. So I want to pray for that pregnancy. People believing God to have a child. You want to pray for God just to touch the womb, cause conception to take place. Bless people who are believing God with children. If He did for work that for George and Rinsey or for any many other people, He will do that for you. God is no respecter of persons. He has no favorites. All of us are loved equally. So, Father, right now, in Jesus' name, we release the power of the Holy Spirit right now to touch people of God, problems in the ears. And right now, every impairment in the ears be removed. I rebuke every spirit of infirmity, every spirit that has caused those problems in the ears. I command you leave in the name of Jesus. I command hearing to be restored, any infection in the ears to be gone completely right now. In Jesus' name, let the hearing be completely restored in the name of Jesus. And also, Lord, I pray your touch upon couples who are believing you for children. Bless, Lord, the womb. Bless the reproductive organs. Bless, and in Jesus' name, cause them to have children that to take place by your power. We thank you, God. Father, we also pray for all the needs that, that are here. Let the power of God be released into their lives, into their circumstances, into their situations, causing miracles to take place. Things to turn around in their situations. Thank you for doors that will be opened, God. For those who are expecting doors to be opened. Thank you for open doors. Favor that causes open doors. The hand of God that unlocks doors for them. Where they can move forward in their life. Move forward in their career. Move forward in their professions. That they will see the hand of God unlocking doors for them. In the name of Jesus. Open up the doors for their lives. We thank you, God. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, we bless you, Father. God, we just pray for every person here, God, that as we go out, that you will use us as instruments, God, to release your power to touch other lives. That we will truly experience this rivers of living water flowing out of us to bless needy, hurting people around us. 
Use each one. Thank you. Before we close this morning, if there's anyone here, you've sat through the service and, you know, you heard the songs, you heard the message, but maybe you've never given your heart to Jesus Christ. Maybe there has never been a time in your life where you said, I want to follow Jesus. This is Jesus that people are talking about. I want to follow him. I want to give you an invitation to do that this morning before we close. The Bible tells us that the Lord Jesus Christ forgives our sins. All of our sins he forgives. And he makes us the children of God. He gives us, he makes us new creation, changes us completely from inside out. So if you want Jesus to do that for you, you feel in your heart, I need that. I want to lead you in a simple prayer and then we will close. So if you've never done that in your life, and you'd like to do it this morning, just pray this prayer with me. It's only a help for you to connect with Jesus. Let's pray. If you've never done this before, but you feel this morning you want to do it, you want to, you want to believe in Jesus, you want to follow Jesus, I invite you to just pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, forgive my sins. Make me a new person. Make me a child of God. And help me to follow you. The rest of my life. I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. Anybody here this morning? You pray that prayer for the very first time. I'd like to see your hands. So if you don't mind. If you pray that prayer with me. Very first time this morning. Just Raise your hand so we can see it down here in the ground floor up in the balcony. Anyone? Let's see one. Let's see. I don't know where. I can't see that. Two. God bless you. God bless you. So I see at least two hands. I just keep your hand up. Our greeters will come to you and give you a, a, a bag. I think it's a green bag. They'll come and give it to you. And along with that, there's a card. If you just write your name and your number. Uh, it'll help us be in touch with you and just share with you how you can use what's inside that bag. So please uh, put your name and number on that. Give it back to that person who's come to you. It'll help us be in touch with you. God bless you. Let's close, please. Father, we thank you for your word, for time in your presence. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the sweet abiding presence of his Holy Spirit be with, us, be with us always in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great Sunday afternoon. See you again. God bless. We trust that this message was a blessing to you. We'd love to hear from you. You can email us at contact at apcwo.org. Also visit our website apcwo.org for additional resources. Thank you for listening and God bless you.